Hi, this is Matthew Trum with Treetop Permaculture, and today I'm up in Paradise, California, representing the Campfire Restoration Project at the Paradise Community Guild site. And so about four months ago, we came with a group of people and held a workshop called Sweep Out the Broom. And I was honored to be able to lead a workshop on Scotch broom removal and doing it the natural way. Hi everybody, <laughs> welcome to our Sweep Out the Broom workshop here at Paradise Community Guilds in Paradise, California. We've got a couple great workshops for you today and we're really happy you can join us. My name is Matthew Trum. Uh, I'm a permaculture educator uh, from Oroville, um, and uh, I founded the Campfire Restoration Project after the fires. Um, today, we're talking about the aftermath uh, effects of um, these systems after a fire. One of them is, you know, invasive plants, and uh, the big one that everybody's been seeing is Scotch broom and Spanish broom. It's not just Scotch broom; it's also Spanish broom. Now we are here late. The good side of it is it hasn't gone to seed yet. Ideally, we would have been dealing with this in the spring, right when it's coming up, okay? When it's a small little herbaceous plant. But as this, this broom grows, it becomes a woody plant. It becomes really hard and it becomes much harder to deal with. So you see behind me, we have a big area that the Scots broom uh, has taken over um, and uh, we're going to be working in that area but before I start well, before we go over there um, I want people to understand weeds and this word that we have called weeds um, so first of all it's a human construction uh, this term weeds it's plants that we don't particularly like you know in a place that's all that a weed is a lot of them that people think are weeds are actually native plants um, that are uh, very beneficial in many ways, medicinal, edible, uh, many other things. I don't like to think of plants as bad or, you know, like invasive or, or all these things because they're filling, like, like Scott's broom is filling a niche right now. We need to understand the symptoms, uh, not just, you know, looking at a plant as a problem almost all weeds that we consider weeds, if we remove them, like if we just pull them, we're actually, uh, it's gonna take a lot longer for that succession, to, that system to repair itself. Most people wanna just like attack the broom and we gotta pull it out, we've gotta spray it out. Scotch broom, it releases inorganic phosphorus that other plants can take up. It increases biomass and bioavailable nitrogen and phosphorus. When that plant dies or is grazed by an animal, then it releases it, okay? Or we chop it, it releases those nutrients and makes it available for other plants. So sometimes you have to make a choice. Do I want to keep fighting nature and fighting this ancient expression of, you know, forest coming back, or do I want to actually help that system move forward? How do we understand the function of this plant? How do we allow it to finish its job while still out succeeding it? So we're going to learn to out succeed broom, not to eliminate it, but to out succeed it. We want it to finish its job, but we want to do it in a special way. Okay. And that's going to be by our design. So you guys ready to do this? Let's all walk over here for a second so I can point out what I was talking about here with the oaks and, and different things that are coming back, um, and then we'll get into it. Uh, this, this stuff's gotten really tall, but very often pl uh, plants that come back in areas that are really disturbed, that have a really serious impact on them all of a sudden, um, tend to be crowding plants. Um, they're, they're sort of like, the way I look at it is sort of it's like keep out, like I'm, I'm I'm fixing, I'm working here, you know, like I'm working here, like everybody stay out. Um, it also allows these, these really uh, small creatures to have a habitat in here and be safe from predation and build their numbers back up as well, which is also really beneficial. 
Um, but as you can see, it doesn't, it doesn't bother, you know, these oaks, they're growing right above it. We're missing many, many elements in these forests that used to be here a couple hundred years ago. This is also part of the problem. I mean, we created these conditions for sure. Um, and we used to have a lot more grazing animals. We used to have a lot of other creatures that were bringing up the fertility. If you think about it, you know, every bear every day drops a whole lot of nutrient <laughs> in the forest. They're also walking through, breaking brush down, we used to have the salmon that used to come up the mountain, right? That brought all that critical ocean nutrient and the bear and the, uh, the birds and everything brought all that nutrient into the forest, dropped it all over the place. We had beavers that were making dams and soaking, you know, spreading water and creating this incredible habitat all around. And these old growth trees, we logged all the old growth trees, monsters like four or five foot diameter bigger right all over the place that were all pulling up moisture dropping all that carbon if fire came through like this they would have been fine this might not have been a problem <laughs> back in the day even if you brought in you know a broom um, and dropped it out it wouldn't be like this um, because the grazers would have come through and selected some and you know thinned it a little bit there would be more increased nutrient levels in the soil so it wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be uh, germinating as, as readily um, either. So we have to do that work now. We kind of, you know, humans screwed it up, so we got to come through and be able, do that work to reverse it a little bit. But we can use our animal friends once we start to come in and heal systems. We can bring in our animal friends, and they really are the ones that happily do the work for us. Ideally, we get this before this point. This will be labor intensive, but let's hope it's only one time that it's really labor intensive, right? And then we get ahead of it. And yeah, let's go, let's go show you guys some of the tools that we work with and then how we're gonna do this. So ideally you're coming in the spring and you're getting this stuff early on when it's herbaceous. If you wait to this stage, so a lot of this I'm saying for people that you know in the bear fire, right? Cause you're gonna be seeing this come soon <laughs> next year or the year after uh, some people it came the first year some people it came the second year um, important to understand scotch broom scotch broom seeds sit dormant for up to 85 years in the soil so it's most likely you already have it on your property or it's been somewhere <laughs> around there um, and uh, and you know the idea that you can fight this stuff it's just, you just gotta get out over that because you can't fight it. Um, you can, well you can, but it's gonna be a real tough battle. My teacher always said, if you're, if you're fighting something, you're thinking about it all wrong. Uh, in permaculture, we have a term that says, the problem is the solution. Um, so, meaning, you don't have a slug problem, you have a duck deficiency. You don't have a mosquito problem, you have a bat deficiency, uh, a protozoa deficiency, and a mosquito fish deficiency. Meaning that fighting something like death is not the answer. Bringing in more life is the answer. And poisons, <laughs> which we didn't even talk about, right? Yeah, using Roundup and all these other type of stuff, you know, it's not what we want to see in our community and we don't need it. It's really not necessary. It's been proven to cause cancer. And again, that stuff kills the biology. It kills the other elements that are there that are trying to move the system into a forward expression. So we gotta think smarter, not harder. All right, so what we wanna do um, today is we wanna allow that plant to finish its job. So we don't want to remove the root system, okay? We actually wanna leave the root system in place, right? So the the potassium, the nitrogen stuff that they brought up into the plant is gonna still be released. The, leaving the body of the plant is really important too. Leaving the top to, to break down as well is really important. If you just chop and drop like in the, in the spring or the summertime and you leave that organic material just laying exposed to the sun, there's things called oxidation, right? So the sun is actually gonna oxidize a lot of the beneficial uh, nutrient from that plant away. Um, but if you can cover it either with a mulch or you can have a, a grazing animal actually eat it and turn it into manure, um, that is a better transition than to just chop it back. Uh, of course, you got to do what you can do. 
if you were to come in early spring, yeah, you could totally use this. The only thing I want to, uh, you know, caution on that is there's going to be a lot of other native plants and trees that are coming up too, right? So you take a flag and you can mark critical trees and native plants. So when you come through and weed whack, you can just leave a little circled area around it. And then you can manually come in with a tool like this, this rice knife. This is like my favorite tool is like the permaculture tool. I always keep it on me. But that way I would come through and actually like by hand go around that plant, uh, that tree, whatever, and cut it manually by hand. Um, so that way I don't destroy it with the weed whacker. Let's see what we can do with the smaller, less loud instruments here. Um, pretty much we're down to clippers or rice knife, but mostly loppers. So this is, this is the hand weed whacker that, you know, old classic here. I like these a lot. Um, you can just come through and whack, whack. Um, again, keeping in mind of some native plants and stuff. Do you want to go grab that, John Michael? Um, the, the little tool that she has, this is the normal apparatus that um, everybody's been told to use to, to pull the broom. And the only time I would say to use this is if it's in a garden space you want to use like right now for a vegetable garden, okay? Um, because yes, you don't want those roots there, you know, especially if they're hard and everything, you're not going to be able to grow anything in that. So this is the tool and it, you know, it crimps the plant and basically you just go around the plant and then you yank it up. But I'll tell you what, if you do this for a long time in the day, it still kicks your butt. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Now this is the whole speeding succession forward part. Uh, so we have, this is a multiplex cover crop mix uh, you can buy at the uh, Northern Star Mills down in Chico here. Okay, so it's a, a combination of a, all kinds of winter cover crops that fix nitrogen and, and things like that. In the uh, yes, okay. you would use a summer cover crop though. Buckwheat is an incredible one too, actually. This is a simple one. This is not a native blend, but Jennifer is uh, bringing us a whole bunch of native uh, seeds to mix in with this. So the key here is diversity, um, as well as things that fix the same uh, nutrient deficiencies as the broom is doing but at a higher expression right so it, that higher expression of, of the succession uh in in the system now this is this is the one of my favorites to do though this is uh what i think is the exact um equivalent in the niche that the um the broom is filling in our system here um, this is woolly mullein okay you guys probably recognize this plant these guys end up putting off these big giant pistols full of seeds, beautiful flowers. The flowers are medicinal in many, many ways, good for the lungs. This plant is a dynamic accumulator um, and it's pulling up all kinds of complex, more complex than the broom is, nutrients from deep down. It puts down a, a really deep tap root, sometimes up to eight, 10 feet deep uh, in the soil. And it, it's a miner, you know, mines nutrients. So I want to outcompete this Scots broom with the mullen, okay? The order of operations here is going to be, uh, one group is going to be cutting, uh, second group will be pulling that broom and, and piling it up for a minute, okay, in, in a spot nearby, probably in the middle here, uh, all in one, facing one direction, okay? And, uh, and then another group is going to come through with our seed, then we're going to come through with, uh, with the broom, actually. We'll put the broom on top, a light layer of the broom over top of everything that we pulled to the side. Then we're going to add manure. I have some horse manure. Now this is mimicking the missing nutrients that we are, we're losing in the forest right now. So biomimicry, this is what we're doing today. Um, and then the, to top that off, we're going to actually add a whole nother season on top of it. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of leaf cover, so we're not gonna get those leaves falling. So we're gonna mimic that by adding the wood chips on top of it as the cap, as the top layer of this system, okay? And by doing this, we're fixing the soil conditions. We're allowing the, the roots of this stuff, uh, of the broom and the bodies of the broom to actually finish their job in the soil. 
there will be some broom next year, but it'll be much less. And then in a couple years, it'll be completely gone. But the point is, is that it's not going to take a lot, you know, it's going to be pretty easy. And if we do this in the spring, we really can get ahead of it. Right. So, so that's the deal. So, um, let me demonstrate on one section for you guys and then we can all, uh, we can all get busy. Sound good? All right, let's just do this section right here. So I'm just gonna go, I'm going as low as I can to the ground, okay? Okay, so and I hand it off to somebody. There we go. There's actually already a lot of, you know, a lot of litter being dropped that wouldn't have been here without that broom. I want everybody to really be aware of that. There is a lot of biomass, a lot of soil creation happening here. So, step two, seed. Um, you have some of that mullein? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm throwing a little bit of this cover crop seed in here. Okay. And she's throwing some of the mullein. Okay. So now we've got that. They say to go three times the recommended distribution of seed. So whatever that seed is, go three times that recommended amount and that will lock in that area. Okay, so it's controlling by rampancy, we call it. So using life as the solution rather than death. Now let's grab that broom that we've pulled to the side and we're gonna bring it back in here. Okay, now we're facing it the same direction, it'll really be helpful. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. So you just wanna pick, you know, a direction that you go. It'll be a lot easier uh, so it doesn't get all jumbly. Um, and, and so you see this, now I've got the top half of the, the plants green, the rest is, is brown. So if I were to, to then uh, move down this way, I would just go to where the green, green is on, on the plant. So we're doubling up sort of, we're layering it. Does that make sense? And then we'll be ready for the manure. So this is mimicking our, our, nat you know, our friends our, our dear friends and, and all these things um, that we don't have much anymore. And we're just sort of, you know, giving it a loose sprinkling here, a manure, okay? So last step is a good layer of wood chips. I'd say about, you know, an inch, something like that. You don't want it too thick. Um, so that the, the seeds won't germinate. That's really important. Um, so maybe an inch would be good enough. The other thing great about these wood chips is they sat for a whole year, so they're full of mycelium. What's that? Mushroom. Yeah, it's fungi. It's the body of the fungi. If you guys ever lift up a log and see the white spider webby looking stuff underneath there, right? That's fungi, that's the body, and mushroom is the fruiting body of that organism but mycelium or fungi in the soil holds 30 times more moisture. It also helps uh, increase the uh, nu nutrient capacity and availability in the area. Um, and it's just one of the best, our best allies in the forest is the teeth of the forest. Trees will not grow without it, yeah. And probably a lot of things we don't even know about yet. <laughs> Okay, what about the seeds? How do you know when the seeds are there not to just Sure. Grow? So if there is seeds there, you, which they're pretty obvious, they're these little pods that come on. They're a legume, so they look like bean pods or whatever. So you'd have a clippers or, or a rice knife. You want to make sure that you don't, you know, shake them off. Okay. okay but um, you would want to remove those heads first and put them into a bucket. Okay. When do those seeds come typically? Um, summer. Okay. Yeah. After the flower, yeah, okay. flower and but then you know. seed pod, okay. yeah. And that's what I did on my land. Yeah. I just cut it about this long, and then I just started piling in my truck. So it'd be nice not to have to haul all this away. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'd be nice to put it back to the land. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, as long as you do it before it seeds. So, um, do we want to split in a couple groups here? And then we'll get into it. All right, so choppers, grab your choppers. Um, there's a couple more of these over there. <laughs> Closer you can get to the ground, the better, right? See, many hands make up for light work, you know? <laughs> it really helps. We're being the beavers right now, what we're doing. <laughs> this material. Okay. So try to avoid like, this down here. Yeah. The thing with the, the Roundup, too, is you still got to remove that biomass. You can't no, spray it like this. <laughs> it's just going to stay in there, a bunch of dead plants, right? You still got to remove it. Okay, we'll go in another about, what, foot or so? Okay, where's my seed people? Why don't you be a, in charge of the uh, cover crop? And if you want to do the native stuff. Okay. All right, I'm going to ask everybody to stop for now. Okay. We're going to go ahead and stop. Now, before, just real quick, like, before we, we talk about what's happening here, um, I did notice a lot of folks uh, left a lot of this stuff high. You know, again, just a little bit difficult uh, when we get in there um, to, to walk and stuff. So try to get it down as close as you can to the ground. We now have our crews coming and dropping the seed. So we've got the native blend here, uh, which is a yarrow, goldenrod, Queen Anne's lace, and vervain as well as mullein seed uh, in this mix. And then he's got the, the multiplex cover crop uh, blend. He's coming one wave, she's coming behind him. And uh, so they're gonna scatter all that seed out. Now we wanna choose a direction here um, of to lay these. And I'm thinking it's gonna be easier. And you got some that are like, are like a tree, you know, they've already sprouted. Probably something, a deer like ate it back or something at one point. That's about good. Oops, wrong way. So remember which way it's pointing. So the next group uh, is going to come in and, and layer it, like stack it over. So the green material comes right up to the green material on this, this plant. That makes sense? Yeah. So do the first like foot all the way around. And then we'll come and do the second foot of, of material. Anybody's way over here. So the other way. So has anybody ever seen a beaver work or a time lapse of a beaver? No. Well, I'll tell you what it looks like in the beginning is a, is a big mess. <laughs> um, but once the beaver, um, it, you know, it does its work, the second year, the third year, all of a sudden it's a paradise. And, uh, you know, that's probably the biggest thing in any kind of organic or natural system. Um, is seeing through the time uh, succession and having an expanded view of time. You guys are doing a really good job, by the way. We're busy beavers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then we'll be ready for the manure. So who wants to be on the manure? Kind of manure Do it. You did some of the spots? Okay. And if depending on what kind of manure you have, you know, might might need to spread it a little bit wider. Uh, horse manure is one of the best manures you can get uh, because it's a 25 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. Uh, for instance, a chicken manure is 10 to 1. That's why I say like chicken manure burns plants. The biology is so active in it that it will burn. Okay, so we got seed. We got a little bit more manure we need to spread over here, guys, over on this here. side. All right, that's probably good. Yeah, we've thrown seed over here already? I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Seed we've seeded this area? Nobody, I don't think so. No? Okay, so not yet. 
So then, you know what, let's start, uh, if somebody can help load some wood chips, let's go get some wood chips going. I don't want you guys to go too far because I need to get this wheelbarrow in, right? So that's why I, I say like, let's only do a small section at a time. So um, that, yeah, just don't expand that anymore. All right, until we get the, it's just gonna be hard to run the wheels over it, that's all. All right. So if somebody wants to uh, fill this up, um, I'll just spread it by hand for now. Yep, we're just covering the broom up a bit. Now think about it, we've got this material is free everywhere. I mean, should be. <laughs> it's coming off the mountain everywhere. You know, it'd be nice to uh, to see it used like this. I know, we have... Okay, excuse us, here we go. Beautiful. Awesome. I don't know how to do that shape. No, it's all right. <laughs> Oh, this is very cool. All right. Looking good. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. That's exactly right. All right, how we got? How we feel? We're, we're pretty much out of broom, so we did this section. So, hey, guys, I think we're, uh, I think we did it. We did our first section here. So the thing I want to, you know, say to everybody is like, yeah, this is a little bit of labor intensity right now, but the whole point is, is that it's not, it's hopefully going to decrease in every year it exponentially, right? So you have a bit of labor going in the first time, but every time you're not having it come back even harder next year because you pooled it, right? Or you sprayed it, you're actually going to see a decrease dramatically the next year and increase the overall soil conditions of the area, you know, so. And if you have friends to help like this and we help each other, it actually can go pretty quickly. Yeah, this is uh, hope that help people learn uh, something here. And um, it's really simple, you know, it's, uh, it's not too complicated, you know, at all. Complex a little bit, but not complicated, you know. So here we are, four months later, and it's pretty astonishing. You can see it right off the bat when you come in here. Just on a very initial uh, survey here of the site, standing, what, about 15 feet away, it's really obvious that the areas that we worked in are doing much better. You guys want to take, let's take a closer look. Okay, so um, let's first start off with this one here, what you see behind me is what it would look like right now if we hadn't done anything. Um, you know, about six foot tall scotch broom, as thick as <laughs> black the sun out thick, okay? And so in this section, they came through with a brush hog and they chopped it way back. And as you can see, it's the, still the same forest of, of scotch broom and in about, you know, six months, it's going to look the exact same as what you see behind me. The same thing if you, you know, spray it as well. So you can either keep doing this over and over and over again every year, <laughs> or you can think a little smarter, think like nature, and do what we did over here. So this is the first test plot um, that we did. And you can see the outline here by the wood chip pile. So this is the edge here of the of the wood chips and um, and it comes kind of out this way and goes this way so we've added multiple seasons um, in one short period of time so we sp we sped succession forward right then then waiting this is about a year and a half worth of fall then spring and then fall the layers of green and brown representing the leaves that fall from a tree and the, and the herbaceous plants that grow in the spring. We threw 
a whole bunch of cover crop seed on top of that. Now that's that green growth. That's the big spring uh, addition <laughs> that we added. And you can see it's all coming through. Uh, and actually it looks like the deer have, have munched on it a bit. Uh, maybe even, you know, is a lot taller. But that is coming through the wood chips. And, and if you dig down, you, what you can see is that these these broom plants that we that we put in here like this one okay a lot of people worry that oh if you did that they're just going to re-sprout that's not re-sprouted this is dead as doornail part of the reason is because we added biology into this space the manure and all of its biology helps break that material down and now it's added as, as nitrogen and its phosphorus and stuff to the soil and it's just like nature is building the soil layer. We've built soil. So we've not only improved the, the soil that's below here, the clay, the hard red clay. Do you remember the color of the clay here? Look at that. We can show you guys some clay in the front and it's a red clay. This is a chocolate brown and it also has that structure, that crumb structure. Nobody did that. Well, somebody did that the earthworms and the microbes did that and so it's not only building the soil that was already here but we've also built another two or three inches of soil on top of that that by the end of you know next year is going to all be rich beautiful soil full of fungi full of microbes and on top of that mycelium look at that this little white stuff that you see underneath logs and in the soil is the the fungal mass uh, that's the actual organism of mushrooms the main body of the mushroom where the mushroom is only the fruit underground you have these vast networks of mycelium of this fungi that are helping connect these trees it's like the internet of the soil this is you know soil making and process right here the teeth of the forest and you know and see how it look at that broom it's just it's just coming apart on me you know, look at that i mean try to do that with any of this stuff it's not going to happen you know well maybe a little <laughs> never mind cut that <laughs> but but yeah you can see how it's you know it's dead i mean that's the point right it's it's dead and it's it's coming apart there but i mean look at that soil really cool stuff and super healthy soil here so gives a a plus rating here the permaculture school <laughs>
uh, than we needed to. And, and part of it is because a lot of the wood chips that we have up here are more pine than, um, than oak. And so, but this, this is where we put the cover crop later in this section. Now there's multiple things that are, are really good about this. For one, you know, we love green and uh, we love, we love growth, but it's also created a blanket of cover here which means that it's much less likely that any of the broom is going to come back in this system. Now, I, I do have to say that it doesn't have to be just, you know, these kind of cover crops. It can be lots of native plants. You know, this is just, we were, we were lucky to get donated what we had, and this is what we were donated. We did put some natives, and they'll probably be coming more in the spring around here. So I'm happy to come back and, and check it out even more, but this is super healthy. And if you dig down in here, you can see, you know, you, you still have a really nice healthy breakdown of soil going on and actually probably quite a higher activity of microbes in this system. We didn't go as thick with the mulch in this section. So it's mostly just scotch broom and, um, and the cover crop seeds. So really healthy situation. So I couldn't be happier with the results, you know? Sometimes when you are working with the very fundamental laws of nature, you know, there's certain constants in this universe and there's patterns uh, in this universe. And if you follow those patterns, you follow the design of nature, you really can't go wrong. And so this is something that can be mimicked everywhere. And it might be a little bit more, you know, new to you, and it might be a little bit weird to you and feel kind of uncomfortable, but I bet you, you know, if you, if you can just, and please, you know, ask for help. And, and that's what we're here at Campfire Restoration Project to help people do this kind of stuff. Um, it's gonna really pay off because you're stacking all these functions in one space and you're one time and you're done you know, and it's beautiful at the same time. So I hope that you all can, can do this yourself in your properties and ask us for help if you need to. So, all right, let's make the world a better place.